Would bow with me. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you for this wonderful community. Lessons that you showed on us. Lord, we ask you to continue to keep watch. Watch over the men and women. Keep us safe. Protect us home and abroad. Thank you. We stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, a nation, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Let the record show we have a full quorum of commissioners. Commissioners, you have the minutes from the July 18th meeting in the packet. If you've read them and approve them, I'll accept the motion to do so. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second. All in favor, raise your right hand. Minutes are approved. We have special recognition. We have a declaration. And Vice Chairman Richardson, are you uh, with this? Yes, sir. Greenbrier High School girls golf team, state champions. Come on down. I get the, uh, come on down, ladies. Players come down. Oh, the trophy I like that. All right, whereas for the first time in the school's 27 year history, our girls' golf team secured their first GHS state championship. Whereas this victory com culminated a season of hard work, exemplary sportsmanship, and teamwork among this group of young women. Whereas Columbia County celebrates the 2023 title of the 5A state champion champions girls' golf team, and wish to honor them. Leadership, hard work, athleticism, whereas the entire coaching staff, faculty, student body, and loyal fans are part of bringing unwavering support. Now, therefore, the Columbia County Board of Commissioners uh, congratulate the coaches, athletes for their outstanding accomplishment, wish them success. Signed and sealed on the first day of August, 2000. Well, appreciate the uh, from on behalf of their social studies teachers. We've got a bonus government <laughs> lesson tonight, so that, that's pretty good. Um, very nice to be acknowledged by the community. Uh, golf is a sport that doesn't always get the fanfare of a stadium full of, of people to cheer for them. So these opportunities, I think, make these girls feel good about what they do. But um, let me introduce who's here. Uh, my assistant. I'm Casey Heckethorn. Uh, this is Daniel Jordan, another golf coach. First up is Addison Lukic, Zion Young, Avery Simpson, Benton Vineyard, Maddie Link, Anna Wicklam, and hold the trophy is Reagan Henderson. And I'll point out that the two bookends here, Addison and Reagan, were both All-State players for us this year, too. Um, and I won't say a lot, but two pieces of advice. If you see him on the range, invite him to play in your Lauderdale. But, <laughs> But uh, don't take them on for money head to head, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but thank you again for having us. Thank you, Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Appreciate it. And, uh, come together and get a picture here. So. I'm impressed. Are you staying? Hmm. 
Oh, no, they're just getting their purse. <laughs> Stuck me right into that one, didn't they? Guys, we come home. I was in shock. Oh, Commissioners, you have the consent agenda in front of you. Each item on this agenda has been through the necessary committees and received the necessary votes to be placed on this agenda. We'll meet with your approval. I'll accept the approval. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any questions? All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. On to the debate agenda, unfinished business. I believe you have the first item. Yes, sir, I do, Mr. Chair. Uh, item A1. Uh, I make a motion to approve the alcoholic beverage license for Ridge Road Bait and Tackle LLC for on-premise consumption, sales of beer, wine, and distilled spirits. If, if you remember this, at the last commission meeting, we had a, a discussion about the act, actual application. Staff took it that he applied for on-premise consumption of beer, wine, distilled spirits, and off-premise consumption of beer and wine. We have spoke to the applicant. He has clarified that he is only wanting to sell on-premise consumption, beer, wine, and distilled spirits. That is the action that he is Nothing taking. out the door. Nothing out the door. Everything stays on-premise. Thank you. Questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Carries. Next item is my item. I asked uh, an issue that we voted on last week to be considered. I'd like to make a motion to reconsider the motion made on July 18th, 2023, to deny the variance to sections 90-147G, 10B, use provisions for, provisions for property located at tax max 061, parcels 020M, 022A, and 022 to allow for 24-hour operation of a proposed convenience store gas pumps. Thank you. Um, last week, we had three or four of these, and... I acknowledge I got confused on one of them and voted the wrong way, so I'm rectifying that situation. Any other debates or? This vote is just whether to reconsider. That's correct. That's correct. All in favor of reconsidering, raise your right hand. All opposed? Three to two. Here I have a motion for item A2 to make a motion to approve the variance to section 90-147. D10B, use provision for property located at tax map 061, parcel 020M, 022A, 022, to allow for 24-hour operation of a proposed convenience store with gas pumps. Second. This is a request to allow the convenience store to operate 24 hours a day. Currently, they are limited to work from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., Parents will allow 24-hour operation for a Parker's Columbia Road. No, I, just, I voted incorrectly before. Rectifying that situation. Staff have any more? I, I would like to say commercial brother corners are commercial and third corner is uh, where they have church so residential per se however there <coughs> those businesses though are not 24 hours currently so comments or questions all in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed? Enter, I believe you're still up. Yes, sir. Item uh, 12A1, file RZ230701. I make a motion to approve the request for a conditional use for massage for property located tax map 079, parcel 098E, subject to the condition enumerated in the July 20th, 2023 Planning Commission report. Second. This is a request for a conditional use of massage at this location. There has been a massage business at this location for approximately 10 years under different owners. Uh, new ownership requires bringing this parcel into compliance with zoning requirements. 
while you're hearing this conditional use for massage. We did have an, an instance with the previous owner where they were operating outside of code. They did have a hearing. They were put on probation for 12 months. However, they are selling. New owner has a couple of licensed massage therapists ready to come to work. She's got one in training and has plans on hiring two additional ones as her business. Did not receive any public comments on this at the Planning Commission vote. Overlap between the I'm not aware of any connection to them, but I'll defer to no connection from staff has checked with them. Questions? Motion is second on the floor. All in favor raise your right hand. All opposed? Next item is uh, file RZ230702. Make a motion to approve the request for a major PUD revision for property located at tax map 060, parcel 1012, subject to the conditions enumerated in the July 20th, 2023 Planning Commission report. Second. This is a major PUD revision that was applied for by the HOA of Magnolia Valley Plantation. They are looking to amend the PUD to allow them to build a playground in their amenity area. Currently, their amenity area has the pool and the parking lot and the pavilion. They're looking to add this playground behind the pavilion. Between the time of this PUD being approved and platted, our requirements have changed a little bit. So if you see here, there's five foot side setbacks. Um, those are actually now should be um, 50 foot for a pool from the property line and 25 foot for a building. However, this was done properly at the time, but because they're asking to change it, they should bring everything in compliance. So we are asking that, along with this approval, that they are not held to that as five, the 25 foot setbacks, they're held to a 10 foot, I'm sorry, um, parking here, 10 foot setback, the pool will remain where it's at, 20 foot minimum build for any new structure, buffer that you see here, the, the HOA is actually required requested that we make that a condition of that buffer being installed as part of this change. Any other questions? So there was some concern with the property, the property line having a fence along it. One of the conditions that a, a fence must be maintained along that area. Um, right now, I believe that part of the fence is owned by the individual, uh, individual lots. In addition, that the fence remain in place, we would be responsible for having the fence installed if one were to go down. Anything else that came out of that, Scott? Um, just that uh, the neighbors were a part of that discussion with the HOA prior to them applying for the uh, request, so they've, they've addressed that. The landscaping should help mitigate any of their concerns as well. Questions? Raise your right hand. Carries. Your next item, uh, A3, file RZ230703. I make a motion to approve request for a master sign plan for property located at tax map 069, parcel 102. Second. Right, so this is a request for a master sign plan. A lot, lot of information I'm going to throw at you here. So current code allows for one freestanding sign per road frontage for a business. They are limited to 225 square feet of sign face and 18.75 of height for a facility over 100,000 square feet on an arterial road. 18.75 high and 225 square feet and one sign. What they have asked for is approximately, not approximately, five signs. Two at the main <coughs> entrance. Um, those signs will be about 30 foot by seven foot structure, you know, monument sign, natural stone, 410 steel, um, 30 by 7, have a planner in front of it. They will have the GIW and the KSB logo on those. At the shipping and receiving entrance, there'll be two very similar signs, but with less prominence. Those signs will be 30 foot by 4 foot, again, having company logos, um, as well as shipping and receiving on those. Um, in the center between those two entrances, they were looking to put in a 15 foot 4 tall by 16 wide by two foot deep monument sign with a digital display 
facing both directions. Um, between those two entrances, they have a nice serpentine fence, which is basically a concrete footer with four ten steel pickets, as you can see on the on the drawing here. Um, between the signs, they extend probably thirty foot, approximately thirty foot beyond the two sides of the end. When you put all that together, it amounts to two hundred and sixty nine square foot of sign face, about nineteen and a half percent above what our code allows. This site is also about 300,000 square feet of building space. So they're three times the size of our 100,000 requirement, only asking for about a 19.5% increase in volume, but asking for five signs versus one. But it is about 2,000 foot of road frontage they're having to deal with. They are trying to separate visitors from their shipping and receiving. Uh, they'll have a lot of landscaping built around these fences as well. We haven't received any negative feedback from residents or the city of Gravetown since it no public comments at all. Questions? Motion to second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. And I believe you wanted to speak on this next issue, Stan. Right. State your name and address for the record, please. Certainly, Chairman. Uh, my name is Patton Hahn, 1901 6th Avenue North, Birmingham. I'm with the law firm of Baker Donaldson, which filed the application here. I, I believe that um, what we're talking about is, has been adequately, it will be adequately described here in a moment and is certainly adequately and fairly exhaustively summarized in planning staff reports that were part of this, which both approved recommendation, approval of these. Um, we do understand at the Planning Commission they certainly asked us some questions about the process, about how we got here. And it's not perfect. Could have been handled different. Um, but I will say that from when I got involved in May, contacted the county's planning department staff, and they told us what was expected of us. That's what we did. And that's how we got here. Um, we've been open, and, and the county said what they required. That's exactly what we submitted. I understand that this afternoon there was some concern about some equipment put out there. The first I learned, uh, yes, sir. I reached out to my client and asked about the circumstances of that. Can I ask, do you represent AT&T or the railroad? I represent a company called City Switch, okay. which works with AT&T and the railroad and puts telecommunications equipment on railroad rights of way. And, and I'm sorry for not explaining that earlier. That's okay. I wanted to make sure I understood. Okay. Um, I reached out to my client about that to get the background of that, and apparently a company called Anscom, which is a vendor for AT&T, believed that the earlier building permit from CSX entitled them to put that equipment there. On March 30th, when my client learned about that, they said to stop all work, and that's what happened. No power to that, no other telecommunications equipment. It's not live at all. So your client has known about it since March? But that's when they learned about it. And did you and they really said to stop that them. to our staff that you knew there was something? I did not know about it. I apologize for not bringing that forward. But we would still request that this be approved. I think Mr. Shepard has a few. Stan Shepard with at and I reside at 366 Farmington Drive in Evans, Georgia. Uh, and while we are not the applicant here, we are the tenant that is looking to locate on this tower. So I appreciate the opportunity to speak. And while we're on the subject that I wasn't expecting to address and to kind of further your question, uh, what evidently, ANSCO is actually the name of our vendor that will place fiber to our sites, whether it is to any customer or for our wireless company. And yes, they did uh, get ahead of themselves when they saw that there was a building permit and they played the box that we were sent the question for was to terminate the fiber into. And I do think that there was a walk up or walking cabinet actually placed as well. And then in March, again, when they found out that they shouldn't be there, they, they stopped all, all processes. Uh, I was not aware that it was in Chris. place, so when I have communicated to uh, to you all in this past week, yeah. 
I've got your your photo of it. Oh, so multiple pages. So unfortunately, it looks like also a generator was placed. So, but again, in March they did stop everything. There is no switch gear in the box, according to four or five different people I've been on an email string with for the last hour. And certainly there is no antenna from AT&T on the tower and certainly nothing is live. And if we get to a point to where this is not permitted, we will remove all that, you know, all the equipment off of there if we're not going to use it as a wireless service. But as Mr. Hahn uh, referenced from an AT&T standpoint, when I first got involved in this a couple of months ago and I started having conversations with staff, it was obvious that this was not handled properly to begin with. And we apologize for being, you know, a part of that is being the tenant. So two questions were asked, what should have happened to begin with, and then what needs to happen now? And, and how can we possibly rectify it? As the tenant, I, I would like to speak to the need, uh, just real quick, from an AT&T standpoint. Been very upfront that we are currently on a site in the nearby area. That lease is expiring uh, at the end of September, and through negotiations, we quite honestly got nowhere close to a new contract agreement with the uh, tower company that we are in right now. So we have already provided notice that we are coming off of that tower. And so my concern now is I do not want to leave a gaping hole in our network. Uh, Baston Road there at Washington Road and Riverwatch Parkway is a major corridor. And there are quite honestly two pieces to this. You have a coverage issue and then you have a capacity issue. I think it was shared with y'all some heat maps as to what it would look like if that tower was not in place. That's the coverage. That is, do I have bars on my phone to where I am talking to the antenna? But another concern, if this is not there, is the capacity. That is a high capacity area. And if we do not have the tower there, then we lose the capacity for that area. And what that means is I may have a signal, but can I get a call out? or can I get a data session set up? So we need, if we lose that site, not only do we lose capacity there, but we lose capacity at the surrounding towers as well uh, that we would have to pull from in order to pull that. So yes, there's been some missteps, more than I was aware of an hour ago, but I would respectfully still ask for your approval for both items, and I'll answer any questions. So if you're coming off the other tower in this, not to get a signal. I would be looking for another we are going on to which would require another power going up. We would somewhere. have to find some kind of vertical structure to replace that with. When are you coming off the other time? Twenty eighth of September is the latest date according to what was sent to the uh, tower provider. Uh, and I do think that had a play in how we got ahead of ourselves, knowing that there was going to be such a small gap. It is common that we do engineering work and that we start the planning. And there is a box, I've seen it before, that is checked when a permit is provided. The permit was not for us to be able to place that equipment yet. Trade out getting lines moved on our roads. Sir. <laughs> 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 Things oh, entertaining, Mr. 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 Chairman. <laughs> Any other I thought it was questions? a great compromise myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'll like this back. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, in addition to um, it not being handled correctly to begin with, your, your words, um, yes. there was also apparently information on March 30th that was not um, about the equipment being installed that wasn't displayed by the, disclosed by the applicant to our staff. And so you understand how it would feel to us like somebody pulled a fast one. Listen, I, through this whole feels. process, I've been able to put myself, myself in the chair of many people that would look at it, and I know there are quite a few concerns. I will tell you that Mr. Hahn and I have been working together, and he was unaware of that as well. And he or I, I probably should have taken a closer look, but I also was not familiar with what CSX, because that is a communications tower for CSX, and I communicated with a few of you today that that was my assumption 
as to what we were serving. That was an incorrect assumption. A lot to digest. I understand. Any other questions? Comments? Thank Filling you. Of the <laughs> Is there somebody Thank named you, Jason sir. here that wants to speak as well? Free request. Okay. Motion in our future. Yes, sir, Mr. Chair. On uh, file RZ230704, I make a motion to approve the request for a rezoning from unzoned S1 for property located at the intersection of Baston Road and Washington Road with the condition that a 10 foot wide buffer be installed on the southeast west side of the fenced area and planted with plants of sufficient size visually screen the equipment contained inside the fence area, not including the tower. <clears throat> so the actual request is to rezone from an unzoned piece of property, which DSX property is not zoned in Columbia County. They're asking to zone 0 .02 plus or minus acres, basically your, your fenced area here, S1, so that other users can utilize this tower. CSX does not have to have our permission to put a communication tower on their property. Right. However, if they want to, AT&T, Verizon, whoever, they need to have to follow our code. Our code says it must be done properly. There's also a companion variance that goes along with this. Uh, I will explain it to you, but so you can consider it. They're asking us to change our, our setback distance our, to four feet, where code says it should be 110 feet. Quite a Quite a change there. Um, as far as the go back one, Patrice. As far as your condition of the of the buffer, you can see here they're proposing on the west side, the south side. What they're not showing is this east side here. Uh, that's what your your motion was to, yes, to also buffer this side as well. Um, you saw from the, the photograph that trees in this area are already planted. If you go to the actual photograph of the They've actually already planted trees on the south and the west side. The soil suitable for adding rock or is it rock? It's a or? rock and asphalt. If you, it's hard to see here, but this building here in the back, their parking lot kind of extends <coughs> almost up to it. Uh, I'm not sure what this was here when I was out there on site was mulched, and it was nice and soft, so I guess they dug it up and made it. You can cut, there you go, there's a great idea of it dealing with here. So asphalt on this side, rock on this side. Of course, this here, this line is actually um, county right away, so they cannot put a 10 foot buffer on that side because it's not their property. And this is their gate here, so up to buffer in front of their gate, they can't get on. Why we were showing buffering where they can. This can It is something that they can able to do something, right? We're not just saying do this as a condition, but there's no way for them to do anything. Go back to the um, right there. So you can see the dark lines here, they're property lines for CSX. Line here is their fence line. Basically, asking to buffer that little small area right there. Now, it might involve digging up some rock, trees, but it fits property wise. I don't want to put a condition on something. Something can't be possibly done, you know? I think the fact that I know the commission is aware, but just to be on the record that the county's spending significant dollars right now in the beautification of Washington Road. So trying to do away with having fences exposed and those kind of things, we're trying to buffer those and we're spending significant dollars doing that right now. Matter of fact, bought a piece of property just so we could help beautify that corridor. 
I guess contrary to what Mr. Johnson just said, but if you screen the fence versus the plantings, but the screen doesn't hide the fence, it just hides what's behind it, whereas the trees would hide the fence as well. Yeah. Motion to second on the floor. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Uh, lastly, uh, item uh, BA0701. I make a motion to approve the request for a variance to section 18 312 lot size and setbacks to reduce the building setbacks to four feet from the northern property line for an existing monopole tower located at the intersection of Baston Road and Washington Road and compromising 0 0.02 acres. Second. This is the variance for the setback. As you see there, the tower is existing. It, it sits there in order to meet our code, they would have to completely remove the tower and, and actually the, the, this piece of property could not hold a tower to meet our code. So we want the tower to have AT&T or anybody else on it before. How many tower we're I don't know when it comes to that kind of stuff. Probably not many, two or three maybe. Questions? They know there's no. I mean, this is just to get it in lines. All in favor, raise your right hand. Passes. Now we're on the legal matters. No legal matters. No request for review by committee. Any public comments or presentation? <coughs> Go straight into executive session, which I believe we can deal right here. Make a motion to approve to James and Denise Butler $6,700 for tax matter. for $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000, $1,000,